Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch Cam. Welcome to another collector's interview. Today we're here in Zurich with Christian Link. Christian, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. A bit tired, but, <laughs> but I'm ready for the show, yeah. Let's get this going. Uh, today we're here at your beautiful showroom gallery. It's called the uh, Wunderkammer, actually, right? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the Chamber of... Uh, Wonders. Wonders, huh? Yes. So you don't collect just watches. Primarily, I think you focus, and as we see, on very special things. Where are we and what do you do for a living? We are in a secret location uh, a bit outside of Zurich. So this is uh, what I always wanted to have, like a room where you have to have an appointment to go. So we are uh, not on ground level, so people can't just walk in. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a hush-hush kind of place. Yeah. And I now also work together with the color auction house and I make uh, natural history and space exploration yeah. auctions for them, um, which for me is like a kind of an homage to the old cabinet of curiosities, which go back to the 15th, 16th century, where people would just collect everything that made them, wow, I need that. And uh, Yeah, no, this is a lot of cool and also some some things are very weird things around us from animals to different uh, movie props as well so yeah. what's what do you focus on now and so people understand you also sell these things so you are basically collector curator dealer also so if somebody sees yes. something he wants around us you know he can also just contact you when i started as a child i just picked up every stone and and uh, a snail shell and little natural history objects and that grew much bigger so I, I did a lot of taxidermy and skulls and natural history and I also worked together with the museums here in Zurich so I learned a lot from people that know a lot more than me about these things but now I'm gravitating a lot towards uh, meteorites so maybe you can just pick up one of these stones this uh, this is for to me a normal stone you find on the floor but what is it actually this is a real piece of the planet Mars. <laughs> Give so, away in the description. <laughs> so 70 million uh, kilometers away. <laughs> wow. And due to uh, an asteroid impact yeah. on Mars, this stuff was propelled outside in space yeah. and it flew a couple of hundred thousand years through intergalactic space. And by luck, it landed. <laughs> on Earth. In Zurich. <laughs> in Zurich, yes. So very cool, very cool. This is just unbelievable. Super rare, huh? So when we talk about rare watches, it's cool, but this is like another dimension of rare. Yes, Mars is very rare and only since NASA has like the rovers mm -hmm. on Mars, we can for 100% say it is a piece of Mars. Mm -hmm. We can yeah. do the analysis. Makes sense. And then from uh, our more close neighbory, guy in the sky hmm. like at night you look at him okay the moon yes so that's a little a little Piece sliver of, moon. of moon um <laughs> and has beautiful inclusions and that's very typical for a moon meteorite right? okay. these white dots and um yeah i think omega even makes i think for some special editions for the yeah. speedmaster they make i think the sub dials made of uh, moon meteorite i think yeah it could be could be with the yeah. uh, platinum speedmaster maybe Wow, this is amazing, man. Did you ever think about doing something like this in a watch? Yeah, I mean, it you in. know, the funny thing is the man who pretty much infused me with my love for watches is the uh, not very well-known guy, Jasper. Yeah, never heard about <laughs> yeah, him. I don't know. That's how I found out about you as well. Huh? <laughs> Jasper, shout out. You guys Absolutely. made a video as well about the exactly. whole Wunderkammer. So I'm yes. going to put a link in the description so they yeah. can check it out. Yeah, very cool. So but he knows a thing or two about watches, yeah. He does know a little bit, yeah. Not like us. No, no, no. <laughs> no, seriously, he sold me a really nice Midas in white gold. Yeah. I always liked the Midas. Yeah. Um, and there is a Mars style in the works. Nice. But actually, it was a lot harder than we thought. We, we thought it's going to be finished pretty soon, but um, we have some issues with the, the stone is very brittle. Yeah. So it breaks. So I have a lot of broken Midas Mars styles to sail. Hit him up. But I also see some like uh, known artifacts or collectibles from, let's say, more my, my generation now, like the Marvel stuff and this yeah. mask right here. Huh? So for the 90s kids, yeah, exactly. For 90s kids, here we have 
Um, the original mask from The Mask <laughs> with Jim Carrey. Nice. Um, and this was a so-called uh, stunt version. So in the movie prop world, it's it's a lot about what kind of item it is, because yeah. from every item there is a so-called hero version, a special effect version, and then a stunt version. And the stunt version is is, is usually very light weighted. Yeah, oh, it can, it and, and can some, get damaged a bit. It can get damaged, well. and so this is uh, I think the one. <laughs> Very good acting on your part. <laughs> Thank you. I think this he is cool, man. I think he throws it behind the couch yes, in one yeah. scene. And, uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's a low key, and it's funny. It has a nice connection to the Marvel universe as well, because that is this pretty is much. Nice. It's Loki's mask. Makes me a bit prettier. <laughs> Damn. Um, so to hold something in your hand that really was used yeah. in the movie for me is absolutely magical. And obviously, then you rewatch the movie, you see your mask. Like, ah, uh, it's super nice, very cool. So this is really my new love, and uh, I, yeah, a friend of mine in Italy, Luca, he really um, paved the way for me to get into this, nice. and now it's it's absolutely full blown my new addiction. Even worse <laughs> than watches right now, to be honest. Um, <laughs> So how much would a mask like this cost so people can understand the gravity of it? There's some pieces in the room that I would never sell. We can yeah. talk about that uh, later. But yeah, like the mask, I might put in auction or something and then mm -hmm. it could get maybe to 30, 35K. Oh, there, was, there was another mask, uh, I think two years ago, it went up to almost 100. Wow. So it's the same with, with everything valuable, right? I mean, if there's two crazy people that really want it, yeah, it can go the, up the price if you put it in auction, yeah. yeah. Nice. So what are some of your other, let's say, favorite movie props in this room? We've got something really crazy here, which yeah, is... Yeah, don't cut yourself. <laughs> a bit sharp, maybe, yeah. Huh? Uh, so for people that recognize this... They should. Freddy Krueger, huh? Exactly. The nightmares. You know, you, know your, you know your 80s movies? <laughs> yeah, I'm a 90s kid, so I watch the reruns, you know? This is yeah, so this cool. is a special effect glove that was made for the Dream Child, which is the fifth, okay. fifth uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. And, and this is great because I have the letter from the special effect artist. So we know it's 100% the real deal. Yeah, nice. Uh, and there was blood meant to be spread out here through like a tube that uh, ah. Robert Englund, the actor, had on, on here. And then it would, it splash, would splash out, out here. Nice. So, <laughs> so to me, to have a piece that was really like used in production, yeah, again, is really, really That's magical. Cool. And then we've got some guns, and what else do you have here? Yeah, these are uh, from my favorite movies, the Alien franchise. So usually I don't really like uh, guns, and uh, I don't like to show off like weapons, but, mm -hmm. um, but these for me are like mo movie relics yeah, as a piece of history. Of so we have the flamethrower from 1979, Alien, from the first one. And then we have the pulse rifle uh, from That's Alien, cool. <laughs> from Aliens, from James Cameron. So. Nice, yes. very cool. Yes. Then we got some Marvel stuff as well. There's a yeah little rope there. What is that? A little golden rope. That's the lasso of truth nice. from Wonder Woman. <laughs> the only good DC movie. Yeah. <laughs> sad to say, it's really it's really a bit sad. I tend to agree. Yeah, so far. <laughs> yeah, and then we have uh, from. Maybe the start of the whole modern comic uh, adaptation movies, uh, we have uh, Hugh Jackman's original leather jacket from X1. Nice. From Brian Singer's very first uh, X-Men movie. And I'm going to put this one in the December auction at Color. Nice. So yeah, if, if you want to wear wants one, yeah. if you want to wear the original Hugh Jackman jacket, you can. check out. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So let's jump into the watches now and uh, maybe start with the one that maybe started your whole journey. Which one is that? Yeah, so I said Jasper really infused it, yeah. but the match was lit by a friend of mine, Alain. He was wearing always watches and I, I suddenly just uh, realized I never really wore watches, mm. but I always liked watches to yeah. see them on other people. And um, for a long time, I also didn't have the budget to go really into watches. So. So the first one I bought was funny enough the same model that Alain had, and that is a Nugget. So it's a Swiss uh, uh, independent guy, and he made them in homage to the Cartier. Yeah, 
tanke uh, više, ja. Exactly. Ne. With a movable movable locks and uh, I just really really like the very nice. simplistic uh, design and the little uh, little details and it's a it's a jump power so it's a good size as well huh? I have a few jump powers myself but they tend to be usually smaller mm -hmm. from the old models yes but this is a modern size here very cool yes do you wear this a lot or just on like special occasions or now I wear it only on special occasions yeah. I, um, but I used to wear it a lot there's like an old watch Instagram thing of me on that I don't okay. use anymore and like all the 21st pictures are always that watch. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. The beginning, yeah? limited edition I see, 33 50. out of 50. Yeah? Yes, yes. And I remember like in the beginning how I would stare at the little window to wait till the, the to jump. jump. Uh, nice. <laughs> it's just like magic. Very cool. And a small detail as well, huh? a little diamond here at yeah. 6 o'clock. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. Oh, it's, it's a cool piece. I've never seen this before. Yeah, and I paired it now with a Gifrer uh, yeah. stretch bracelet. Um, oh, those are always comfortable. Yes. Super nice. And then you also have some retro style watches here, let's say. This one and the uh, AP, which we also never showed before. So, Yeah, the lip crazy 70s design. Um, integrated bracelet. Like, you can't get more integrated yeah. <laughs> than this watch. It's it's uh, crazy. <laughs> the, the whole construction. It has to fit you. That's it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, and actually, it's it's surprisingly cool. Yeah, it, it is. All, it all also looks like a Star Trek wrist yeah. communicator, <laughs> which uh, makes it also good for so a movie you, guy. You, you put this on, and then the pulse rifle, and you're good to go. I'm good to go. The, maybe space. the Captain America helmet, and then you're yes. safe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I like that watch <laughs> a lot. And it's it's it has the running seconds. It's yeah. also funny. I love if something is happening on the dial. I hate watches without a second hand. Yeah. yeah. True. Very nice. Also a cool piece. Yeah, the Z the AP Zebra. That's mm. actually the newest piece in my collection. I just yeah. got it from Alex uh, from uh, Risk Classics. Again, nice absolutely two -tone, stunning very uh, two -tone. construction. <laughs> very two tone. <laughs> All the way. Even yes. through the dial. <laughs> So, yeah, it's, it's a cool piece. Really, really. AP cool. isn't only about the Royal Oak, so there's yeah. many pieces like this available, but people just often don't see them in person, so they're not. Yeah, it's, it's a very raw bird, I think. They, yeah. did, they didn't do a lot of those. And, I think uh, so too, yeah. But I love this kind of uh, the gold, which is inlaid in the steel. It's yeah. Yeah, really cool. Perfect. Another quirky watch that yeah. I uh, just acquired recently, so I didn't uh, change it into a nice uh, bracelet. We just talked about that before. I, yeah. Sometimes I think it's horrendous how uh, people uh, pair watches with terrible, terrible bracelets <laughs> or terrible uh, leather bracelets, especially. <laughs> so this is a, a Le Far. Yeah. It was made for the 100th anniversary mm -hmm. of the company. So it's either a lacquer or a lapis lazuli mm -hmm. dial. Um, it does look like lapis. It right? does look like lapis. Yeah, with, a little, yeah. with the little dots. But I'm sure you have enough people that can check out uh, yes, stones yes, for you. Yes. <laughs> and it's a, it's how we call it, retrograde. Yeah, it's a double retro retrograde, yeah. Double. Retrograde minutes and retrograde uh, hours. Huh? Okay. So essentially like the Mercator uh, from Washington Constantin. Okay. It's very rare to see a double retrograde like this nowadays. Almost nobody does it, so. Yeah, and it's a heavy case construction. Yeah, and the case is in gold or is it just plated? It's in no, gold, it's a right? 18 karat gold, yeah. So now I'll see the jump, both at the same time. And yeah, the minutes. so cool. Yeah, this yeah, is so uh, cool. complicated, huh? Mm -hmm. And very heavy on the movement as well, so. Okay, so as soon as I have it fitted on a nice, comfy uh, strap, I'm going to wear this. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. A th nice, thin calf strap, yeah, very cool. Yeah. And then, what else we got here on the table? Maybe you pick one? Yeah. Just What's this one here? Stands out from the crowd because then we have mostly just bracelet watches. Few. True, true. What's this sport? Your, your your sportiest watch maybe here on the table? Yeah, I mean I always like the fifty fathoms. Yeah. Um, but first, it's really really hard to find a nice one. Um, mm -hmm. They are absolutely out of my price range now. Most of them because I really like this like special one, the military shooter. Mm -hmm. So, but then you're talking like really high numbers. So by absolute coincidence. In, uh, in the German watch fair. I came across this watch. I never even knew it existed, to be honest. It's from Grün, yeah. so a brand that I, I... I do have like a small Grün, but I, it was just not on my radar pretty much. But I just fell in love with it. From my small wrist, the size is perfect. It's maybe about a 38. It also has the backlight 
uh, bezel, bezel, nice, which is in perfect condition. Yeah. Then the radio markers. So if you if you go with the guy on the edge, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So absolutely stunning. So this is now my my 50 fathoms. Nice, nice. And again, the price wise, it's a big difference probably. Yeah. And I think I, together with Jojo from Jojo La Montre in Lausanne, we coined a new name in the, the watch geekery. I called it, it's the beer glass hour markers. The beer glass hour markers. Yeah, right. Looks per, like a glass <laughs> of beer, right? And because this is original, the loom didn't fall off. It is. Yeah, no, loom. it looks, looks great. Huh? It's like this and it looks like little glasses yeah. of beer true, all around. True, true. Yeah. And then we have a very nice uh, dial here. Salmon dial, blued hands, beautiful piece, Corona. Yes. What's the story behind this one? It doesn't for me really matter what kind of brand we're talking. Um, I'm always fascinated by design. Mm -hmm. And I, I really try to only buy watches in, in really, really good condition. So this one was an unworn case. Mm. Dial has a little bit of spotting, but for yeah. a, a 70, 80 year old watch, I think it's, yeah, absolutely, nothing, it's yeah. absolutely okay. But it's 100% uh, untouched with the square pushers. Uh, I think it's Walshu 22. Ah, nice. It has a really loud tick, yeah, which, which, is which, which I love. <laughs> Like with the old pocket watches. Huh? Yes. <laughs> and the salmon dial yeah, is, is the star. Yeah, it's for beautiful, sure. yeah. And it's, oh yeah, it's it's a Tell. Yeah. I didn't even know the brand. I, I never heard tell of the brand. brand. Uh, so yeah. if anybody knows the brand, maybe leave a comment down below. Yeah. But yeah. the dial is just spectacular. Yes, it is. Very nice. And it doesn't break the bank. Yeah. And a better strap than the other one. <laughs> and it's the original one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> comfortable, comfortable. And then we jump into the Rolex collection let's say so yeah usually i would start um trading so in the mm -hmm. beginning like i said and to this day i try i mean i can't go crazy with my watch spending so i, I usually take a couple of them together and then i trade them for a bigger piece so this was is a very very early one a uh, royal precision mm -hmm. and this one i was just drawn to also condition it's yeah, it's immaculate it's, it's huh? pretty much it's perfect like Yes. Looks like somebody wore it maybe for two weeks and that's it. <laughs> yeah, so that's a really nice daily wear, 34 millimeters, a bit on the smallish side, but for me it's yeah. absolutely oh, perfect. That's great. With a beautiful, it looks like a cream dial. Huh? Yes, yes. It's not white anymore. And then we've got a nice Explorer here. Yeah, so this is cool maybe well. the epitome of my watch collecting because, I mean, what I do, I go out, I explore the world for interesting mm. pieces. So I really, I felt so much drawn to just a little word on the dial explorer. Yeah. And then also, I think it's the, maybe the most beautiful design Rolex has ever done, uh, like in its simplicity yeah. and, um, and you can't beat a good gilt dial yes. with the gloss. Yeah. And this one is just like black oil. And again, the condition is immaculate, huh? like yeah. on the previous one. Yes. No scratches almost. I mean, just the usual stuff, but nothing crazy. And this was the, that was the first expensive watch that I, I bought yeah. in my life. What, yeah, was the, what was the price back then, if you remember? I think it was about 20. Yeah. I think and you don't What get. do they go for today? What do you think? I think in this condition, maybe 26 to 28. Okay, nice. So nice. But the explorers Keeps are still the not going crazy, but that's no, I, to be honest, I really don't care. Yeah. I mean, I'm not lying because I don't like it if people always say I don't care about appreciation. Yeah. Of course, I do care. Yes. But this, I just love it's it. It's not the most important thing. Yeah, for yes. sure. And then we have, have some really nice day dates here. This one has, a, has an interesting story because I went to very um, kind of snobby dealer. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to name him. Um, <laughs> you know who you are. You know you, <laughs> maybe. If you're but he only, he only speaks Italian, I think. Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Tutto ben. <laughs> and his reputation is very, he's very snobby. Yeah. And if you, if you don't bring like a couple of millions, he wouldn't even talk to you. Okay. So I went to this fair and I saw the watch on the table and I just fell in love with it. So it's a 6611, the one before the 1803. So it's the very early day dates. It also has a black gloss style, which is absolutely stunning. And then the bracelet is just unbelievable it's an oyster riveted yeah. yellow gold bracelet and i think they just have that warm hue they get yes. from the, the patina Agreed. and it's just vintage day dates in yellow gold perfect yes yeah. absolutely it's, it's a classic design so i told him how much 
and he spurted out a number and I think because he doesn't speak English he said something very low okay so I was like okay deal <laughs> and then he realized it, it he did a mistake he didn't want to say that but he was very old school so he gave me the watch for the price he nice. said and that was wow. like six years ago wow and dad really appreciated that one yeah uh, and um but it was he funny. was snobby with a man he, of his word huh? he was snobby a with a man of his word. yes nice. absolutely I like that but anyway this is what my favorite kind of when i get invited to a party or something yeah. like a wedding or so that's i really like that nice. it's a good choice uh. yeah and then we got something uh, much more rare as you explained to me before as well yeah the, this so this is here. more uh, kind of for a non-watch guy you could think it's steel so it's very yeah. under the radar yeah so again we have the oyster precious metal <laughs> uh, bracelet which is i mean even this is incredible rare but to go a step more you have to go white gold yeah so here we have a white gold riveted oyster bracelet on an 1802 with a smooth bezel and it has the gearsht uh, white gold dial which i think and i talked with uh, jasper from amsterdam winter watches about it that he also never saw another white gold yeah. uh, gearsht dial like that so it might be a piece unique hmm. wow and I think the combination of the 1802, the bracelet, yeah, and no, the it's dial crazy. is crazy. It's a, cool, it's a cool dial, huh? So, I mean, the thing is, with the old Rolexes, I'm always fascinated by who might have worn that. Yeah. I mean, if it was a, a piece unique, I mean, who went into the boutique who in... Who commissioned 19, it, huh? So that's 1966, the watch. So imagine the times, 1966. Yeah. yeah, who went into the boutique and said, I want this configuration, White what, gold, what this kind dial. of gentleman, yeah. So very under the radar. I mean, he didn't want to flash because mm. it's a very quiet watch. I would love to know who yeah. bought it. And, and I, I never really understood the fascination for the Conjure dials. But again, it's just for me, a symbol of the times. Mm -hmm like that they gave out these watches. And this one, I think the whole configuration with the bark and the white dial. And this one is in one of the Mondiani books. Yeah. Yeah, it's one, nice. of, the, one of the day date books. I think it's called the Royal, the Royal White or something okay. we call it. Very cool. With also very raised indexes. Huh? Yes. These yes. are always cool in macro shots from the side. Yes. Like little jumping boards, basically. Do you wear this a lot or rarely? Mm, yeah, sometimes I wear it. I also need to buy a day date. That's, uh, that's on, on the list for the future. Yeah, we can talk. But I think I would prefer white gold. Yeah. White gold's nice. Understated a bit, you know, people think it's a, it's a steel date chest from afar. Those who don't know. But I'm sure you want to have little diamonds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Baguettes, <laughs> honey baguettes. <laughs> Maybe a lapis lazuli da, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, that, that would be nice. But it's yeah. not so much understated anymore, yeah. <laughs> and then we go to one of the most popular brands nowadays, but this is a very special piece. Or the AP. How did so you come to this Royal Oak? I always, always loved uh, the, the Royal Oak. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, to be honest, I think the Nautilus is a bit overrated, yeah. like design-wise. I, I prefer the Royal Oak as well. I think this is so much stronger, yeah. has so much power in the language. And then the bracelet is, is absolutely good. astonishing. Good size as well, eh? And a beautiful dial. Trop yeah. Tropical? So it's tropical. I actually traded it for another watch that I now miss, but well, sometimes you do. <laughs> sometimes you lose. Yeah, but this happens, yeah. But you can uh, still buy it back eventually. Yeah, no, no, I'm, st I'm still happy. And I think it's, it's, ah, it's really great, nice. Uh, the dial is just beautiful. Yes. Clean bracelet as well. Case is nice, untouched, sharp, almost uh, sharp, sharp edges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the perfect watch, man. Good size as well, huh? What is it, a 30, 35, 36? It's 35, yeah. It's a, it's a, I think it's a tad smaller than the 14790. Yeah, right? ah, perfect. Yeah. I need one of those next to the Cartier like this. Absolutely. Good size as well. Also a small watch, 33 yes. on paper. Oh, but it but fits you yeah, perfectly. Wears uh, perfectly as well, yeah. But all the integrated, all with the bracelet watches, mm. uh, they automatically become a lot bigger. a bit bigger. Huh? Yes. And then one of the watches, which might be my favorite on this tray. Best for last. Best for last. Uh, the dessert a watch that gained popularity during the last few years. And yes. rightfully so. Uh, Absolutely. A nice Breguet tourbillon. Classique. Yes, classic yes. tourbillon. So this one is in rose gold and that's really my special occasion mm. watch now. I always loved the tourbillon. Most of the good tourbillons are like way out of my yeah. range. 
And I think if you want a Tobio, you need, you need to get a Breguet, right? Yeah, yeah. Just, he's the guy. <laughs> he's the guy. And I think it took a couple of years. I'm now into watches for maybe 10 years. And uh, yeah. I think it took time for me to appreciate something like that. But also, it's to me, it's like a steampunk time machine yeah. thing to look at. If I wear that, it's really like I'm always distracted by my own watch. <laughs> it's like unbelievable. You can't get nothing done that day. <laughs> and the case back is... Yeah, beautiful engraved. And rose gold is more rare, yeah. Usually they come in uh, yellow gold, sometimes white, but mm -hmm. uh, rose gold is also very rare and just looks stunning. Yeah, and what do you, what do you get for the uh, bang for the no, buck? You, say, you yeah. can't compare it, yeah. Some of these neo vintage watches like the Breguet Turbion, the GP Triple Bridges, maybe the first to list Northern Freaks, you know, those are things still underrated. It's absolutely stunning watch. And just simple mm -hmm. time, the dial, and the big ass Turbion. Yeah, because that's why you want it. Yeah. You want it because of the tool. Yeah. Yeah. And the size is good. I think it's a 38. No, I think it's actually a, it's quite smaller. I think it's 36. Even. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is magic. <laughs> yeah, I need one of those. <laughs> Isn't it? I mean, to me also, it's, it's so amazing that on such a small space, you can create so many yes, different that's designs, true. That's true. so many different emotions, as so many so stories. Many, so many people worked on this piece. Huh? Somebody yes. made a guilloche dial, yes. another guy engraved the back, yes. then a watchmaker put it together. I mean, you know. Yeah, and it pulls you back into time when watches were really uh, pieces, pieces of wonder. Yes, yeah. absolutely. True. So Christian, what's next for you? What's next in the, let's say, movie prop collectible scene? What do you want to buy? What's the grail? And uh, maybe what's the grail for the watches, if you have one? Well, I mean, I really got also into dinosaurs. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so recently we had the first auction for natural history and mm. color and I, we sold uh, the big flying dinosaur. Yes, the which, you, which you, I saw in the Jasper video, I think. Right? Exactly. Nice. It was actually hanging ah, right here. That's cool. So now it's gone yeah. to a good home. So if you talk about grails, I can uh, spoil something for the next June auction oh, because yeah. now we signed a contract. So for the very first time in Switzerland, we're gonna have the most famous dinosaur of all time. T-Rex. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> the very first Turnus in, in this room or no? No, it no, fit, no, huh? no. We're looking for, uh, if you know a nice room in Zurich, to put a 12 meter lizard. Chad. <laughs> yes, let us know. Damn. So that's gonna be up for next June. That's a kind of grail, huh? probably. That is, yeah, that's yeah. that grail, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. So the idea is to only include 30 pieces and to make it an absolute highlight auction. Yeah. So oh, 10, awesome. 10 fossils, 10 meteorites, and 10 props and space exploration yeah. items, but just like the crop, uh, the, the best. Then yeah. bam, one T-Rex. Yes, yes. So if you want to buy a T-Rex, Next you know, June. This is the guy. <laughs> and with, with watches, do you just buy them, you know, depends how you feel about it or you have a few grails that you want to buy down the line? Yeah, like most here, I just came by them. I didn't, yeah. I, I, it's like with my things, I never go out, look for something specific. Yeah. I mean, there's a raw cases, of course, I have like a fixation, but most of the time it just happens upon me. But to be honest, I really like the old day dates and um, to get into like the stone dials a bit more. Mm -hmm. I do have an Onyx and a Lapis day date, but I, I also Ox I, blood I would that, love yeah. to have the Bloodstone, for example. Yes. I missed one out on Amsterdam Vintage Watches about <laughs> four years ago, an absolutely stunner. <laughs> nice. So Christian, thank you so much for having us in your beautiful showroom. No, thank you for your time. It was just cool to see, huh? like watches I see all the time, but you know, <laughs> all of this. I was just laughing is, is, and scoring. Is, is there a prop that, that you were like, wow, unbelievable? I mean, okay, like the animals are amazing because yeah. they're, they're so close, right? You yes. don't see them in person like this. But obviously, because I like Marvel, the Marvel stuff is nice. Uh -huh. Also the mask, because I did watch it a lot as a kid. Yes. I th but also these, like um, this horn here, which is uh, from a Unicorn. No, it, it, it is, yeah. it is. <laughs> Just, just cool stuff all around me, man. But I think Marvel is nice, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The maybe Captain America mask or something like this. Yeah, yeah. But his head is small. He wouldn't fit me at all. So uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> maybe this, the mask, and that's it. I'm gonna put your links to your social media in the description because you Thank do have you. a YouTube channel, 
and Instagram, so people can check it out. And guys, you know the drill, like and subscribe, share this video with somebody who likes watches and also who likes quirky stuff like this and collectibles. If you want to buy something, obviously Christian also sells some of these things. Just don't ask him about, you know, some of the props he doesn't want to sell. But uh, yeah, thank you so much again. Hey, and absolutely guys, welcome. Thank you. I'll see you soon and thank you for watching.